What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet discussion video. Today, I'm back and uh, I, I have a friend with me, Joe, obviously. I feel like it, hey, yeah, there's a lot of new subscribers who are like coming over from like the Smogon side because of the lore videos. So like, obviously Joe, you they might not know you even though like every VGC subscriber will. So you wanna introduce yourself again. Yo, what's up? So I'm Joe. I play a ton of EGC, you know. Um, I'd say I'm pretty decent at it too. Uh, I obviously also have my own YouTube channel, although I'd say um, Marcus's videos prior like <laughs> like less super specific. Mine are like super super specific to like VGC competitive stuff. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, thanks for having me on, dude. Yeah, Appreciate I it. mean, you said you were pretty good. Would you happen to be a, a certain? a certain rank in a particular region at a certain time uh, yeah i was i was the number one player in um north america especially in 2022 our most recent season and uh i have been like traveling all around the world to like play VGC, yeah so i'd say i'm pretty good at it it's fun <laughs> yeah joe's a, joe's a cool guy and a good player so we have the two most qualified people here to make some wild speculation about gen 9 pokemon we know only <laughs> two things about these things we know they're typing and we know their abilities and we don't even know like all their abilities because they tend to not tell you the hidden ones like i remember when they uh showed off um alolan nine tails for the first time it was like this thing gets snow cloak and i went wow it's gonna be bottom tier and then in gen 7 it was like mandatory for the first couple weeks of the format because it yeah, had no warning Aurora <laughs> it was insane but yeah uh today we're gonna go ahead and do sort of like a very very speculative tier list about um how we feel about the pokemon that were released uh in trailers for gen 9 and just rank them on you know a scale of you know how likely they are to be good in vgc so if you guys enjoyed that at end point at, 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 i'm like messing up on my words if you guys enjoyed this at any point in time do me a favor leave a like in the video and subscribe to the channel for more competitive pokemon content and also subscribe to joe obviously his link's going to be down in the description but um let's let's get into it so we have one, two, three, four, five tiers, uh, and it's uh, very likely good, possibly good, who knows, probably not good, and doo-doo tier. Uh, now, keep in mind that Joe is not seeing my screen share right now. He's just talking with me on a call. Right, so. I saw it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so he knows it's the Joe UX, UX9 tier. All right, let's let's uh, let's start with the top. So Sprigatito, it's, it's a pure grass type, and I'm going to pull up the Pokemon page just to read some stuff. Uh, it's important. This thing's nine pounds. It's gonna be able to switch in on that low kick. It's insane. Uh, but oh, yeah, bro. yeah, I mean, it's got overgrow. Obviously, the hidden abilities for like every starter, uh, every like batch of starters tend to be kind of good. It, it depends, right? Because like in Gen Six, what was it? You had like Magician Delphox and Bulletproof. Pretty Greninja, though. <laughs> yeah, and then it, there's always one that's just disproportionately good. Uh, Gen yeah. 8, we had Incineroar, and Primarina was okay, but it, like, got its ability way too late to be good. Uh, had you it gotten Gen that. 7, bro? <laughs> yeah, sorry, Gen 7. Gen 7, uh, if Primarina... <laughs> yeah, if Primarina got, got its Gen 7 hidden ability, uh, like, in VGC 2017, it would have actually been, like, really decent, but it didn't, so... Uh, and then in Gen 8, we have two Pokemon with busted abilities, Libero Cinderace, Grassy Surge, Rillaboom, and then we have Sniper Inteleon. I'm sorry, Inteleon fans, but... Uh, we obviously are going to have to go in assuming that these things are going to get hidden abilities, but we can't really say quite what they're going to be. I mean, it's a grass type, Joe. Like, just fully evolved. Grass types, like, yeah, they're just not particularly, like, strong usually. I mean, Rillaboom was an exception because it got Grassy Surge plus then Grassy Glide. I think without Grassy Glide, it wouldn't have even been amazing. It, but it like, actually got Fake Out or fake out and Knock Off too, which was absurd. Yeah, and like I don't think we're gonna have that again. So like it, it really depends too. Like the grass types really need some ability to carry them. So like mm -hmm. my natural assumption would be like it's probably not gonna be amazing, and that's just pretty much down to the fact of like it's a grass type, it's a starter, so they don't really have good track records. Like I mean, even if we look back at like the other um, starters, right? Like superior not good um i guess i yeah. won a regional in 2018 but like it wasn't great um, yeah i mean and jamie was, jamie's just built different so, so. Yeah, yeah yeah and there was the studio i um in gen 7 venusaur is pretty so busted great. but it's only busted as like a support like it's not really that yeah, often so yeah and also too like venusaur had like a really good dual type to support some teams i i don't necessarily see this thing being good i guess it really depends on what it evolves into but i would probably 
want to put it in like the probably not good tier just because it's a grass type of starter. But. I mean, I feel like all the starters have to go in who knows, literally just because mm -hmm. like every starter can be taken from bottom tier to top tier just off of an ability and usually an ability that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> you know, like they gave G Greninja Protean. Like that was the first time anything got Protean. So I feel like who knows for all the starters is appropriate, but we should still talk about like their typing and stuff. I still um, feel like the grass. I feel. I still feel like the grass should be in the, the bad tier. Hey, but, hey, like, but it's but it's a but it's a cat, so it's guaranteed fake out. I it's do, a rule. Do you actually think they're gonna give it fake out though? There's no way know. they don't give it fake out. It's all right. It's a cat. It's a starter. There's no way they're not gonna let it breed with like Purloin or like, you know, any other cat Pokemon that gets fake out. There's no shot that this cat Pokemon doesn't get fake out. So the that's real why question I, is, it, is it gonna like evolve into like an ugly cat or is it gonna be like a nice looking cat dude you know? i hope per ugly 2 comes i want a big fat garfield that's all i need in my life right now um all right let's do let's do foy coco i feel like yeah foy coco's you know once again a starter with we only know the original ability but historically fire type starters if we don't count Incineroar, because i feel like that's an outlier right in VGC, the fire starters are all pretty eh. Like, you have to work hard to fit them on a team if they're not called Charizard or Incineroar. Yeah, I think, like, the some of the fire starters had, like, notable things with them. Yeah. So, Typhlosion never really had any good use. I think it was, like, an eruption bot with Sun in, like, yeah. one of the formats, but, like, it wasn't really that good. And, but, like, like, VGC is notorious for, like, sand and rain teams being good, so fire types tend to struggle unless they're, like, on a rain team to, like, kill Ferrothorn or Kartana. Like, it's, like... Yeah, unless you have, like, Intimidate, your fire type, and you have, like, Fast Followers or a Parting Shot, you're usually... <laughs> yeah. Usually not, not the best. I How mean, I guess, probably theoretically... Yeah, theoretically though, like if it turns into a fire fighting type, like it might have some kind of niche. No, because I guess don't consider, don't say like, that to me right now. I don't want to hear that. I don't uh, want to hear fire fighting. Remember, remember everyone, remember everyone with like Blaziken being like, "Oh, this thing's not gonna be good." Did you just see that? You get Mega Blaziken and it ends up being good. But like I Blaziken Bisharp, no, like, that was insane. Yeah, Blaziken Bisharp. Yeah, but no, I probably would say the fire type starter. It probably, it probably won't be too different because that's such competition, anyways. With like. A lot of other fire types are usually mm -hmm. included in the game. Like, I'd be shocked if like we don't have like Arcanine or like some kind of fire intimidator. Yeah, you know? there's so much. There's um, so much competition. Like, literally, like, I think 2020, uh, 2022, it was like a lot easier to fit two fire types onto a team just because one of them was Charizard and the other one was Incineroar. Where like every other yep. format, having two fire types might be like a death sentence. Yeah, um, terrestrialization is gonna be interesting because I oh, guess yeah, you we can, have to consider you, like. That. Yeah, that's that's the one thing I was thinking about, but I still don't think it's gonna help the starters that much because yeah. of the way like they're like usually even their base stats holes aren't particularly impactful. So unless they have really good stat distributions, it's probably not gonna be like that great. Yeah, so I mean I'm leaning on like probably not good, but who knows is usually the correct choice. Quackly. Honestly, like I think it's very okay to put like the grass and the fire type and the probably not good. You know what? Like... You're right. You got a point. You got a yeah. point. All right, Quaxley. All right, so here's the thing. There are two universes. There's fire, or there's there's flying water Quaxley, where it loses to everything if because it's not Gyarados, um, and it probably doesn't have Drizzle like Pelipper. And then there's like fighting water, which would actually be kind of crazy because we don't have too many yeah. of those. It's just like Poliwrath. I feel like he's gonna be fighting type, but we can't really tell. I think um, you will too. I actually say like it gives me more of a fighting type vibe, but like I say that, and then it's gonna be this like flying water type with really mid stats here. Dude, I'm so. telling you, we need either like like an armored up like captain, uh, cause it's Spain, right? And he's like, he's got like a military aesthetic. If we don't get Quackistador as like a, the actual name for it, I'm gonna lose my mind. I think Quackistador is like a perfect name for this thing. That would actually be, that actually would be pretty funny. I could, I could see like a pirate hat on it, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, I think probably not good is probably safe though because there's a there's like a 99% chance it's just gonna have like a times four electric weakness. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean the starters in general, yeah. like they don't really have much potential just because of like how limited they are. I feel like in their kits, right? Yeah. Just wait like, for the first DLC they, when they drop the hidden abilities. They're gonna go crazy. Yeah, I think they're also gonna be a little bit scared to like make the starters good because of like if you think like back to like Gen 8, like how good like Rillaboom Cinderace were and like how good like even Incineroar was in pre yeah. at some point, like 
are gonna be careful to not like make them too good but then in that in that spirit they're also gonna make them too weak you know that, yeah that's something that like gen 8 start gen 8 players who like started in gen 8 uh with vgc are never gonna understand is that like pokemon has not always been like listening to the competitive community like it feels like they were but like the game didn't feel as balanced as it i, I don't know how to say it right so like it feels like when they release a Pokemon nowadays, they like really get into the nitty gritty of how it might function in a competitive setting. Um, mm -hmm. Like like Kartana, I feel like is like a prime example. Like they built that thing perfect. Like it's a glass cannon, but it can also be like an assault vest mod. It has so many like modes to it. It's, I don't know. I feel like nowadays they're probably gonna like look at like previous gens, like you said, and be like, oh, the starters are too strong. But like back in the day, they'd be like, yeah, let's give all of these guys huge power or something, you know, like <laughs> they're the starters. Yeah. You need to be able to plow through the game with them. So, yeah, I mean, also too, if you think about it, right? So like, I, I think a lot about like Sword and Shield and how they approach Dynamax, like a lot of moves that were made legal for Pokemon and like Sword and Shield doesn't work in like a non Dynamax format, right? So like, yeah. think I'll call to tell Party Shot and Cinemore, like all these options that like, otherwise would be like inherently more broken in like yeah. a non-max format. Like the game was literally designed around like supporting Dynamax. So I wouldn't really like expect them to not do that with terrestrialization. So I'm sure they have that as a consideration. Yeah, dude, um, like I have a video coming out with protein. JPR Poke Trainer, and like we were talking about power creep and in gen eight, I literally say like this gen sucks for power creep solely because they balance the whole thing around Dynamax and it's not going to stay. So like, yeah, like mm -hmm. I, I feel like they're probably going to like look at terrestrialization and be like oh let's not give this thing access to a rock move because you know if it has like stone edge why wouldn't they just like terra blast instead like give it like terra blast like limit the power of their of their coverage i feel like that's like going to be the the thesis of this gen is just limiting coverage i think yeah i think the pokemon that are going to benefit the most off of terrestrialization are going to be the ones that have such a wide variety of coverage because it just gives you like gen one. More, like yeah yeah i mean pretty much like also too like i think of like some notable mons like i've talked about this before even like i'm um, like other videos but like i literally have talked about like hydragon or like these double type dragons like Garchomp, yeah. you know like mons that don't necessarily benefit off their second type or like want a change to the type to, like make it stronger mm -hmm. um and like kind of benefit off of that like solo defensive type and like a lot of mons i think are going to want to turn into steals so I think that if your typing, whatever your original typing is, um, favors you turning into a skill type, um, you're automatically gonna have like a pretty like solid case. Also too, um, uh, we're getting a little bit off topic here, but like even like Pokemon with a limited type, like a lesser type, yeah. like, no weaknesses, right? so like stuff like that. You know? Yeah, like levitate, yeah. turn into electric type, you're just like solid. Uh, but yeah, I mean, starters, Starters probably all not not probably not good until the hidden abilities get released. Uh, yeah, Wooper, unfortunately. Wooper <laughs> is kind of crazy uh, because it's a ground type with a water immunity, and it's probably going to keep it upon evolution. I'd imagine they wouldn't get rid of that. Uh, but Wait, what ability does it have? It has it's... water absorb, so it's got a wa it's got water immunity. It just gains health if you hit it with a water move, and it's uh, poison ground. So I mean, poison ground isn't like a terrible typing. Um, you're hitting. I don't. It, I like it because like if it's a special attacker and it has like sludge bomb and earth power, that's really decent coverage. Anything that switches in a sludge bomb is probably going to be like a steel type, and then earth power hits them. Uh, so well, I like let me that. Take a look. What's Quagsire stuff actually? It's, they it's probably going to be some um, Yeah. I what I'm wondering because like sometimes Pokemon's like afraid to like change their types on their forms too yeah. much. So like if they don't. So like, yeah, I, I agree it has potential, but like, here's my thing is like, okay, so let's say they turn it into regular Quagsire and they don't buff Quagsire's stats. Mm -hmm. That thing's rocking like a 65 special attack. <laughs> yeah. 65 base stats. But also attack. it's a it's a poison type. So, and Quagsire gets access to recover. So like this thing actually might not be that bad in like the first format when we have like a restricted, not a restricted desk, dex, like, but uh, a regional dex because it could be like a, a poison immune, like stalling mon. See, to me, I feel like I'd probably be more inclined to put in the who knows category just because we don't know its stats. Because if I its feel. stats are dramatically changed, um, then I think it has that. Also, obviously, whatever moves it has access to, right? Yeah, um, for sure. But I don't think it's like, like looking at normal Quagsire, I would be like very skeptical of it being like in like a good tier yet, just because yeah. we don't know much about it. Yeah. So. Uh, Armor Rouge. 
uh, or armor rogue I, I always mispronounce these guys armor rogue um it's fire and ghost if i remember correctly and it has non-contact special fire type close combat basically uh wait wait, wait wait what what so it's fire ghost or fire psychic i thought it was fire oh sorry fire psychic yeah so fire psychic so i mm, it's it's iffy like if this thing gets fighting coverage it's probably going to be okay but fire psychic makes me really skeptical because if incinerator ever makes it into the game this thing's gone like you know it gets snarled to death it like resists everything from it um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm assuming that Incin won't be in the first deck, so with Arcanine, that context... Though. Arcanine, though, you know, Arcanine usually is like an Intimidate Snarlmon in regional decks, too, which will be able to tank anything from this guy. Okay, but let's say, theoretically, right, so obviously Lele probably won't be in the game, but let's say Indeedee's in the game, right? Yeah. Um, and Expanding Force is a thing, right? Yeah. Theoretically, if you have Armor Roge, and then you have Indeedee, right, Indeedee Female, and you have expanding force spam like that could theoretically be good because psychic spam stuff is usually good mm -hmm. um in these like kind of metas uh like the more limited metas because like there's less counterplay to it right yeah um so i could i could actually see it being like possibly good like i wouldn't say it's like insanely good but i would say that like it has some potential mostly because of like the potential of expanding force plus indeedee if indeedee's in the decks right yeah i'm also thinking and... that but we do know that both indeedee and hatterene are in so i feel like if you're going to have an indeedee your psychic pump your psychic mon next to it is probably always going to be hatterene instead of this guy but oh, i still think possibly good is probably correct yeah i'd say like, yeah. like that's if you want trick room and like if you have size spam right with like i mean do we know how fast this thing is no, we, we know nothing about it, but I would imagine if it's an armor Pokemon, it's it looks like it's not slow. Like, I would say, like, this looks like an 85 Pokemon, like a Rillaboom speed. Um, yeah, I can see that. But it, it, I feel like it'd be a good wall breaker because if it's if it's got fire type, fire type special close combat, you can specs this thing and probably start one shotting things because banded close combat is like a menace to pretty much anything that doesn't resist it. So if this thing has yeah. like a decent special attack stat, like specs specs armor cannon is going to be absurd dude i was thinking about like specs like um expanding force with ndd can you imagine mm, that dude yeah and you got helping hand too like you can break some stuff with that yeah or, i think possibly good is is definitely right uh belly yeah. bolt i'm a belly bolt believer i'm a belly all bolt right believer. so so listen let me get this let me get this right so this ability confuses me a little bit so so what exactly does it do again it Okay, so like, it's it's pure electric, and its ability is if it gets damaged by an opponent's move, or if it... Here, let me see. Um, when Belly Bolt is hit by an attack, so it, it's probably like, you know, if you like bulldoze it or with your partner, or if it like gets water gunned or whatever, that means its next attack will have double power if it's an electric move. So it doubles the power if it's electric move. And the reason I know it's double is because the language that they use is Belly Bolt becomes charged when hit by an attack, boosting the power of the next electric try move, which is literally how the move charge works. Um, yeah, like Tapu Koko gets charge and charge. While it doesn't, this move doesn't like increase special defense or anything or this ability, but charge's description is uh, the user's next next electric move has two times power. So where I'm thinking uh, with this, what I'm thinking with this is that it's probably going to have like a Zoomerol stats, but like no huge power. Because um, it looks fat, right? Like it looks like a fat guy, like a fat mon. And it's probably mm -hmm. meant to be defensive if they, you know, have it an ability that requires it to be hit to deal massive damage. Like that just feels like a game freak thing to do nowadays. Like it feels like they're designing their mons around their abilities pretty well. So, like, if it has a zoom roll type bulk, like, 100 HP and, like, decent defenses and, like, just middling special attack. Like, a zoom roll has 60 special attack, right? If this thing has, like, 70, I think it's okay as long as it can eat a hit. So, like, the the cheese strat that I'm thinking of, I don't, I don't think it's going to be, like, that good, is you trick room and then you have, like, a, a dust clops next to it or, like, a, a ground type trick room on, like, I don't know, like, a Runarigus and you bulldoze, activate a weakness policy, and slam the opponent with uh, times four discharge. Like, I think that that would be like a fun mm -hmm. little gimmick for it, but I don't know how good it's gonna be. See, I would say that like, maybe like the bulldoze discharge stuff could work. My, my only fear with like these kind of mons, right, is so sometimes Game Freak has this habit of 
giving these really bulky mons good abilities, but they give it like a weird speed tier, right? Yeah. So they give it like 60, 60 base speed, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like just fast enough where it like kind of screws it over like in Trick Room, but also mm -hmm. like screws it over outside of Trick Room. The Rampardus issue. Yeah, pretty much. And like, I mean, I could see this thing actually like having a little bit of potential. Like, I, like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh yeah, it's probably like a perfect mod. Like, I would really want to see its speed tier, and I'd really mm -hmm. want to see the moves it gets access to. Yeah. If I had to like guess where it was gonna be, I'd probably put in like the who knows, and like maybe on the low end of possibly good. Mostly That's, because like, yeah. there's a lot of electric type competition, right? So. Oh yeah. I think its biggest thing is going to be what's in the decks competing with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, a couple of things I think about, especially with terrestrialization now being a thing, right? Um, is I think about, like, Rotom, for example, or I think about Electros, right? Or, like, kind of those mods that have, like, I, I talked about this. I, obviously, I've talked about this much, but Levitate Electric types, right? Like, how do you solidify your value over other electric type options in a format, right? Where it's so centered around damage. And I think like if it's slow enough, I could see it like having some value. Like, yeah, but it like. needs to be slow. Otherwise, like the ability might not even come into play. Imagine if this thing has 100 speed and the ability almost never activates. That'd be a that would be <laughs> Um But yeah. I, I will. We probably we should probably speed up. We have like 14 of these, and we're 20 minutes into the video. So we're oh my god, we're going to have to limit our time. Uh, yeah, I put it in. Who knows? Um, Sarah Ledge, it's ghost fire and it has, uh, either a ghost or fire type leech life is like how it's described. Uh, yeah. Ghost fire, flash fire is the ability, bitter blade. It is fire type physical leech life. Uh, cool. I um, feel, I mean, it's, it's ghost fire. It's got like chandelure typing and chandelure has never been bad. Uh, if it has like a decent speed stat, which it looks like it will, you know, it's it looks like it's gonna have like at least like I attack fast speed probably. Which yeah. Be what it needs. Yeah. The only thing is like its ability is probably just meant to be like comboed with like a life orb, if anything, because obviously, you know, that that health recovery isn't gonna do too much for you besides counteract life orb recoil. Yeah, I put in like, like the I put in like the low tier of possibly good or like the maybe the top of who knows um yeah. so my only thing is whenever you get physical attackers in a format where there's probably intimidate like mm -hmm. it automatically means that you have to have like crazy good physical coverage right to to really like solidify any kind of value and because we don't know its other coverage moves that also makes it a little bit difficult right yeah um that's why i see its counterpart actually being stronger no um, chance it doesn't get sacred the, sword though yeah 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 i mean it probably does get something like sacred sword so like yeah, I'd probably say like top of who knows or like maybe like possibly good like towards mm -hmm. the bottom. I think I it's fair. Yeah. Uh, so Titan. This one is going to make me sad because I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I, I, I love Sit Titan. I think Sit Titan's a very good boy. You know, look at him. He's the best. Um, his abilities are thick fat and slush rush. But like, I don't care what ice type you put in front of me. Alolan Sand Slash only barely was viable in 17 in like the least with with the least resistance possible put in front of it you know um mm -hmm. if this thing has 80 speed it can work if it has 75 speed it's it, 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 it like feels too much like the galar fossil so it has to have higher than that otherwise it's just bad but it, I, I feel like they won't do that you know um i think I it's think it is an attack stat going to be good? That's the question. Like, see, here's There's no my way thing, it doesn't right? have a good attack stat, dude. Look at this thing. Yeah, I guess it does kind of look good. So, like, okay, here's the thing, though, that's kind of troll, is, like, can you have an ice type with both a really high attack stat and a really high speed stat? Because I've never seen it, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, my, my theory like... is? Um, mid speed, like, at most 80, and, like, a fat mm -hmm. HP stat, like, like 120, and, like, probably, like, a one 115 attack. Yeah. I think it's going to be yeah, like Darmanitan stats, but slower. Yeah, I could definitely see that. My only fear with it is like, it's an ice type, and like, let's be real, ice types aren't really the best type in competitive. They're yeah. actually probably like. And we're going to try to ignore Terra, otherwise, this list gets thrown up in the air, so. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, Terra is like a huge if. So, like, when people are looking at this list, like, in like three months, I don't think they, <laughs> they're going to yeah. like judge it because, like, you know, you know, it's different. But, like, even with terrestrialization, right? Uh, Cause it's pure ice, right? Like it's mm -hmm. definitely pure ice. Yeah. Um, 
I'm feeling like, probably not good. To, like, you could tear into like maybe ground type and it'd be like a discount mammoth slime with slush rush, but even then that probably wouldn't be like ideal, I'd yeah. say. Right? <laughs> it's just um, it's it's gonna be disappointing, I just know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree with that. I, I'd probably put that honestly in like the very bottom of who knows or probably not good at the top because it's definitely say, better than like starter i'm gonna but. say top of probably not good i'm not even like ranking these among them but just make a mental note viewers it's like top of probably not good um okay here's one i got some words for cyclazar mm-hmm. i think that if this thing has like 90 speed minimum and i feel like it, it looks like a 100 speed pokemon um it's going to be busted for one reason in particular and let me explain that in a sec uh, it's ability shed skin which is garbo but it's probably fine if it's like a physical attacker it can like shut off a burn mm-hmm. um it's that move that move it's got shed tail uh user creates a substitute for itself using only using its own hp before switching places with a party pokemon and waiting so it's a it's a pivoting move that sets up a substitute but it takes half your hp so like citrus berry on this guy's probably going to be decent so you can do that twice mm-hmm. Um, and it automatically switches out into something. We already got Azumarill confirmed for this dex. So, and Azumarill has perfect type synergy with normal dragon. Like, it resists everything that normal dragon uh, gets hit super affected by. So if this thing Mm -hmm. just, like, you can even do Scarf on this thing, and it can Shed Tail just as effectively. So, like, if you run, like, Shed Tail, get in Azumarill, Belly Drum up, like, you can, like, sweep whole games, because they're probably not even going to break the sub. Yeah, I see. I think here's here's my thing, right? So with Shed Tail, um, I think it's a really interesting move, and like they're definitely taking a chance with it. Fifty um, percent of your health is a lot to lose. So like, yeah. My only fear with these kind of mons, right, is like you give up. You're basically using like a three mon team, and then this fourth mon is already just like a sacrificial like land. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like. If it has strong offenses to pair with Shed Tail, I could see it being good, you know, because mm-hmm. then you could use it as like potentially like something to throw in the move and then like you pivot. Yeah. My thing is like, based on how it looks, it kind of looks weak. <laughs> oh like, yeah, look, I think it's going to have like bad, I, I think it's going to have like a hundred attack at most, maybe like 85 actually. Mm-hmm. And like, I think that realistically, right, like Shed Tail is actually a really cool move. Um, I think if I had a better ability, I'd be more convinced on it. But I do think that like, it might have some potential in some like setup teams you know yeah. or something where like you're trying to like you mentioned azumarill is one of them like i even think of like maybe like some like nasty plot towards dance bombs that like want mm-hmm. to be able to set up next redirection right or like dragon um, dance t-tar might even be like okay potentially yeah and i think i think the real like key indicator is going to be like what's in the decks that can benefit off of it because like this one i feel like it's gonna be very dependent on like what's in the decks that can benefit off of its move right Mm -hmm. oh wait something that we that neither of us mentioned um the even though like shed tail takes half your hp to activate that sub is based off of this thing's hp stat so if you run a max hp thing if you run like a max hp set this like this thing's sub is especially bulky like it's oh, hard so, to break okay. that. Okay, that actually changes a lot. Okay, no, no, no. So that actually changes a lot. I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah, because substitute in the game is based off of your your Pokemon's HP stat. Like, like that, like that's that's just how it works. You know, like it takes the the user's HP stat and gives it to the substitute, and it says that's how much HP the substitute has. So if this thing has extra cost on it, I would imagine the substitute also gets that extra cost. So the, it has to have sub- a low HP stat. I think it's probably going to be like sixty HP at most. Probably. If the sub if the sub is fifty percent, then I think this thing's better. If yeah. it's twenty five percent, I think it's way worse. Because you, you can know? do like you can do like max HP four attack max speed jolly, you know, and like just sub in, get something in, you know, and set up. Uh, especially if you have like a fake out lead, like it, it's it's good. Like I wish this thing had inner focus to make it more like safe, but it, it doesn't. So it's mm. like it's whatever. I feel like it's gonna be top of possibly good bottom of very likely good i want to say very likely good just because it's going to enable so much stuff week one i feel like i i feel like i'd probably put it at the top of the uh, the orange one was it possibly yeah, good possibly good. um just because uh it because like here's the thing right with mons that like give up inherent like like they're, it's basically there to be a sacrificial lamb right yeah like those pokemon are forced to be very niche within certain teams mm-hmm. right um so they're kind of forced to like play a specific way which limits how much they can use spam on stuff right so like for example this mon's entire existence is going to be dependent on whether it's good mods to set up right yeah 
So to me, like that doesn't make you like the top tier option. It probably makes you like better because you can enable certain mons, but it probably wouldn't be like, it's a mon that I could definitely see like actually being good as opposed to like some of the other ones we've talked about where it's kind of like, eh, that's a bit of a stretch, you know? Yeah. Um, so I would probably, I definitely put it in like at least um, possibly good. I don't know mm -hmm. if I put in very likely good just because I think it might under deliver in like a wide variety of teams. Like it's not like an Arcan. Right? Yeah, like you can't put it on like every team, you know. Unless it gets snarl, this thing gets snarl, go crazy. Anyways, <laughs> uh, for Rigoraf, normal psychic has uh, basically queenly majesty as one of its abilities, um, and then the other ability makes it so it gets the effects of its berry again on the following turn if it eats a berry. I feel like the berry ability is going to be kind of eh. You know, berry abilities yeah, tend to not be that good. <laughs> but I mean, like just the pure value of being like um being like a priority blocking move i think possibly good is just guaranteed because of that like so bruxish this, saw no like, play in like vgc 17 but also like it it had so much competition from like zarina and stuff the reason i think it's like possibly good is just because like we have a new queenly majesty pokemon basically that is a different typing from the other ones you know like it, it you have options now is it so is it confirmed to work like Queenly Majesty or is yeah. it like, cause the way it's, it was it's, specifically worded was like it blocks priority. Moves. I got yelled at by a lot of commenters. We're just going to, we're just going to assume it's Queenly Majesty. A lot of people are like, you're over hyping it. I'm like, okay, listen, we're just going to pretend it's Queenly Majesty. Okay. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure it is. I just had to mention it, but yeah, we're pretty sure. Yeah. So if it's, if it's Queenly Majesty, I'd say it's probably more in like the, who knows to possibly good tier, probably possibly good, like yeah. the bottom of it. Um, if it, if it is like blocks, like other priority moves, like protect, like those kind of moves, that thing could be like very good. You It'd know? be busted if it didn't um, let you protect. Yeah. Um, cause then, Urshifu you know, too. even on like more offensive teams, like even trick room teams, right? Yeah. Like if that's a trick room setter and then oh it like, let's say portals in the decks, right? Yeah. So, like, no protecting the stall trick room. Thing. Yeah, and then you just like attack with Torkoal. Like, that could be absolutely insane. So, actually, I'd be pretty inclined to put this in, like, yeah. possibly good at least, like, top of it. Um, can I make an executive decision? Yep. Can I put um, Fido and <laughs> Smoliv and Palmy all in, like, who knows? Because there's, like, uh... no info on these dudes. Mm, yeah, uh, I guess so. Palmy is an interesting one, but I, I guess too you don't you don't talk about rumors, so we I can't mean, really go in too deep in that. I mean, I know I know about the leak. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll you know we'll we'll make a new tier. Um, instead of do do Joe X Joe UX nine tier, let's just do Winky Face and put Palmy in there. Yes, yes, I like right. that. <laughs> winky Face. If you know, you know. Um, yep. Palmy. Okay, yeah, Winky Face. All right, that significantly speeds up what we have left to talk about because uh, yeah. <laughs> the Pokemon that we have left are all like super quick, I think. Because uh, yeah. I don't want to keep the viewers here for like an hour. And we're like 30 minutes in. Yeah, uh, Grifify. It's a poison normal type and its ability is unburden and poison touch. So I feel like poison touch is always going to be like your second choice on anything that gets it, <laughs> um, unless it has a worse ability. But unburden's interesting. Uh, if it can do like fake out normal gem stuff in singles that'd be cool but we're vgc so we're not running that uh i i don't know I it, it's, <laughs> it's got it's probably doo doo tier for being real but it, it, if it has like a really good sub <laughs> this feels like sableye without prankster just by looking at it you know yeah i just think it's like okay like i, I don't know like game freak really likes like these tiny rodent pokemon that like are cute and supposed to do something but they never actually do something and like yeah. i equate i equate it to like a edgy Dedenne, you know what yeah I mean? yeah or it's like, probably gonna be like a random like, like no evolution mon you know <laughs> yeah. um, no, so like to me it's just doo -doo tier. like it, like it's not gonna be good there's no doo, doo tier anymore we have winky face so i'm putting it in probably not good <laughs> no, okay. Um, yeah, probably not good though. <laughs> okay uh the dog uh graveyard i feel like we know nothing Ooh. about it who knows? Yeah, that's a who knows. 100%. That's a that's a who we, knows. we don't know that. It's yeah. a ghost type. Literally, yeah. if it has if it had like an interesting secondary typing, we could say something about it. We don't um, know anything about its ability, right? Its ability, it, the ability they told us is like just like a normal like route one ability, you know? Uh, pickup, like yeah, pick up? it's pickup. 
so we don't know anything. Uh, it's yeah. it's probably gonna have strong jaws of hidden ability, I think, but we need to like look at its stats to figure out if that's Dude, even good. I think I think it's gonna have like some ability related to the aura dream stuff that they talked about in the thing. Like it's gonna be some special ability. Imagine it I has think. like a busted ability where like every move it uses has a leech life after effect. Yeah, exactly. Like something like that. I like guess. Yeah. You know. Um. Okay. Cloth. Cloth is pure rock type, and it has that really cool ability uh, that is basically just mini shell smash if it hits half HP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, shell. so mini shell smash how it gets 1.5 boost and yeah, it's all it's the it's plus one in every stat, um, but instead of plus two because it's automatic. So if it gets to half oh, HP so or lower. Oh, so it doesn't get a defense drop or anything? Oh no, it gets the defense drop, but it, like plus one in like every um. Every like shell smash stat attack special attack speed instead of it's half a shell smash. That's like that's kind of cute. Um, if it had a citrus berry, you could proc it twice. Yeah, I mean, you could do like weakness policy shell smash if like it goes second. Like let's say they hit you with a water move and then you like you get your weakness policy and then you shell smash or no you you get your weakness policy and then you get your mini shell smash and then you get your full shell smash and then you sweep with rock slide. I feel like that's gonna be like the the first week um or the week one strat i can see that it really depends on the speed as well right yeah like... that's i think that's the only reason i'm not like too concerned about it being good or too concerned about being bad i mean is because it probably gets shell smash naturally um and it has the built-in yeah. one too so like where other pokemon like torkoal can't use shell smash because like even at plus two it's not outspeeding anything if this thing has like 45 speed like crustle and it gets plus mm. three after a shell smash, basically. Like, it's it's going to outspeed enough. Yeah, I could see that. I think that I'd probably put it in, like, the possibly good tier. Only I'd, because... Yeah, like, um, bottom of possibly good. Yeah, bottom of possibly good, I think. Because also, like, if it's, slow, like, really, really slow, um, then it's literally going to be, like, a Torkoal situation, like you were talking about, or, like, one of those other mons where it's, like, getting a boost in a stat it doesn't want boosted. Especially yeah. if you're using, like, Trick Room or something, right? Mm -hmm. um and like maybe get something like solid rock or something for like yeah. trick room but even then that wouldn't really be amazing for it i guess so <laughs> okay yeah. four more pokemon two two like weak pokemon and like two like legendaries so uh let's do lechonk lechonk is normal and that's it uh it's probably gonna evolve and it has the ability aroma veil or gluttony so like just by utility aroma veil is already like a really good ability um, if I remember, that's the one that blocks like taunt. So, do you think like, it gets belly drum? If it gets belly drum and it's like a trick room Pokemon, like if it like gets slow, if it has like 20 speed and it becomes like part ground type, yeah, this thing's gonna be busted under like trick room because it's probably gonna have a fat HP stat. It's a pig, you know? Um, yeah. with Pokemon, if they're like big boys, they usually have fat HP stats. Uh, so I mean, I feel yeah. like it's gonna be in who knows to be honest, because we need to see more. I think so too. But like, yeah. I'm leaning towards possibly good, just because Aroma Veil is on it. Like, you get utility out of that immediately. I'd say who knows, but I'm actually more interested with the Gluttony ability, only because if it gets like, because usually Gluttony is on Mond with Belly Drum. Yeah. Um, like I think because Lanoon was one of them that was mm -hmm. Gluttony at Belly Drum. Snorlax. I mean Snorlax. Um, I feel like we're gonna get no, a new uh, Snorlax every single gen. We got like Greedent, we got Lechonk, you know, I feel like that's just the thing now. We get a Snorlax. Yeah, well, Greedent was funny because it actually got, um, it got a better ability if yeah. you're a belly drummer, <laughs> which is Peak Couch, so we'll All see. Right. But like, yeah, I think, I think honestly, like I'm more interested in being like a belly drum on. So like yeah. I could see it being like, I, I try to say more who knows, cause it's a lot of speculation. Like there's mm -hmm. also chances of a belly drum because notably all the belly drum mons have like ways that they can hit their stomach and i don't really see how lechonk hits the stomach without like well i can't you know hit its saying? stomach mm, actually maybe, wait like, it does stand up on its back or on its back legs yeah, sometimes. yeah yeah exactly maybe maybe if you give him a belly rub he gets plus six that's just, <laughs> all right. just like rolls over yeah he's like can <laughs> you is like hey bro help me out and you go boom 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 boom, boom. he goes okay i'm gonna go kill something uh <laughs> yeah. all right uh wiggle it pure water type it's gonna be a who knows for sure i mean it's because it's not oh, fully bro. evolved it's gonna it's gonna fully evolve eventually and it's a pure yeah. water type if this thing gets like arena trap it, its current abilities are gooey and rattled but i rattled tends to not stick around for a full evolution like rattled's one of those abilities that goes away um i think if it gets arena trap as like a pure water type it's gonna be good uh, i don't know man i do i feel like honestly here's here's what's gonna happen okay 
it's gonna have Wiglet stats, but the only difference is gonna be its attack is swap for its special attack, so it's still gonna be super frail and it's good to like You mean Wig Trio? Yeah, sure, Wig Trio, Wig Trio, Wig -trio. whatever it is. <laughs> Dude, even if it does, even if it's a special attacking Doug Trio, if it keeps if it keeps a Arena Trap, that's still good. 120 base speed, 100 uh, special attack. Like you can you can specs that thing and just annihilate like ground types, so I can't switch. Mm -hmm. I feel like for I feel me, like it's possibly good, but it's probably but we still have to put it in who knows. I say because, who knows. I say yeah. who knows. But like that's that's one yeah. where we're kind of leaning like if it is special Doug Trio, and like a water type, and it, it has to have Arena Trap to be good in my opinion. I think Gooey's an awful ability for this thing. Um, yeah. Unless like the fully evolved form is like a big cluster of these guys and their HP stats like five, but their like defense is two hundred. You know, like that then that'd be kind of cool, but. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that be crazy? Like instead of instead of Wig Trio, it's like Wigatillion. <laughs> it's just a ton of them. Yeah. See, what I'm interested in too, it's not uh, necessarily related to this list, but like um, obviously, you know, we've seen like uh, you know Wiglet stuff like that. I'm curious, like, well, I guess I don't know if they're considered regional forms, but like, I'm curious what other regional forms we'll get because like that could definitely be like really um, interesting as well. Because like yeah. usually that's actually like the kind of wild card with competitive is like you kind of know like the returning pokemon like where they're going to be good where they're not but like usually when it's a new pokemon it's kind of like very up in the air you know yeah all right uh box legendaries they're both going to be very likely good um obviously yeah, but let's yeah. talk about them really quick we don't know their abilities yet but knowing game freak they're like what is it they're like eight for eight not eight for eight what gen did they start doing it they're um they started in gen three where they gave things busted abilities if they were legendary so they are actually no because oh, the legendaries the and yeah, yeah they, they were pretty wrong. mid so <laughs> let's let's start from gen 5 they're uh they're four for they're, they're three for three on giving the new legendaries busted abilities to make them viable so mm -hmm. i feel like fighting dragon in a in a game where dazzling gleam exists it's probably going to be the worst of the two um Agreed. <laughs> unless unless this thing oh imagine imagine this okay you ready uh, Coridon's ability is like Delta Stream, but instead of like reducing flying type damage, it reduces fairy type damage. Like it's an anti fairy fight fighting uh, dragon type. Um, yeah, that then... could be cool. I might, uh, what I'm curious about actually, so you know how the Pokemon are like based off of like future past, right? So yeah. like I think Coridon's like future, I forgot which one's future, which one's past, but like, anyways. I would be very interested to see if their abilities play around with the concept of that, right? So something like either like making stuff faster or slower, like one says Trick Room on swap or like one says Tailwind on swap. Like obviously that's just like more so like- Watch them just know. get speed boost. <laughs> <laughs> they just get speed boost. So I don't yeah, here's speed right? boost. But like, yeah, but yeah. um, no, I mean, I, mean I, I think it's interesting, right? Like there's a lot of speculation with the legendary mm -hmm. um, with the legendaries because you don't really know what they're gonna have but like i actually think they're probably gonna be the more underwhelming legendaries of like the past few generations um yeah because dragons kind of like yeah it well it's not even the dragons man it's just you have so much competition you know um and realistically they're probably only gonna be viable in like um gx cup formats so well, obviously. like you have zacian probably that's gonna exist at that point right which just uh, annihilates so... both of them <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I think that Miraidon is probably going to be the better of the two, almost exclusively, because you already know they're giving this thing like 170 special attack or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and yeah. I feel like it's just good for the fact that, like, it, it's gonna it's gonna succeed where Zekrom failed. Zekrom was bad because it was Intimidate food, and its yep. and its uh, move wasn't 100% accurate. So like, it, even though mm -hmm. I, I hypothetically should always beat Kyogre, it almost never did, and then it would lose to Groudon, where Miraidon if they give it modern day legendary stats um and its special move is an electric move that you know doesn't miss like you know astral barrage should have in my opinion um or like glacial lance should have had a chance to miss but if they do the thing they've been doing and give it a busted electric move that's a signature move it's probably going to be able to check kyogre pretty reliably and at the very least versus groudon draco meteor off of a special attack is probably going to be like enough to two shot it yeah okay let's do a fun prediction okay yeah. let's predict what uh Coridon's attack set is and what Miradon's um special attack set is I think they're gonna be 165 both. dude that was the number I was thinking I was gonna say they're not gonna hit 170 yeah. I think they're gonna go 165 and they're gonna put some stuff in speed 
Uh, no, that was the number that I had in my head was 165. Um, they're Ultra <laughs> right, Beasts. So they're going to be 167. Is that divisible? So we're on the same page. Is that divisible? I don't know. <laughs> Let's make uh, them Ultra Beasts. <laughs> Prime numbers. Okay. But yeah. Um, I mean, that's... We can probably stop there. We have everything tiered out. I know people probably wanted to talk, wanted us to talk about like Fido, Smoliv, and like a few other like weird Pokemon, but we know so little about the ones in the middle that like we can't make any solid predictions. Palmy is a winky face, if you know, you know. Um, and the possible, I feel like this is about as intuitive as a tier list as it gets. Like you can't see it right now, but it's it's a normal distribution with the legendaries at the top, the fully evolved ones at the at the second to highest tier, the ones with some cool mechanics in the middle, and then all like the starters and ice types at the bottom. Yeah, and obviously like this tier list is relative to the mons that we have on the list. So like, yeah. I don't think by any means we're saying like these mons are gonna be like dominant once we get the entire list of returning mons. Yeah, yeah. when when they when they show us like the ghost psychic or the, the like ghost rock type scrimbo blimbo, you know, like there yeah. who has like the the hidden ability swords dance speed boost, like yeah, like that's gonna be like meta dominating. But for now, this is what we know. Um, and this is what yep. we think. So. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed, oh, we managed to get it at 45 minutes. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, obviously subscribe to Joe. Uh, you have anything else you want to plug, Joe? Oh, I mean, uh, thank you for having me on, man. I'm excited for Gen 9. It's going to be a lot of fun, dude. Hope we get to do more stuff together, obviously, in the future as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm just looking forward to the new Gen and new mods. It's going to be, I think this is honestly, um, like, Gen 8 was cool, and I think it was, like, also a really exciting time but like honestly like i'm super super excited for jamming i think it's a ton of potential so. yeah me too uh but that's gonna be it guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye